In the first part of our lecture, we, we noted at the end that uh, the set of sequences of real numbers was basically just a vector space. And so in uh, uh, this uh, half of the lecture, we're, we're going to talk about how well uh, that uh, vector space structure reacts uh, with respect to um, convergence. And so let's start with A, a real number, and let uh, Xn and Yn be convergent sequences. And so we have a list of things here that we're going to, to prove. And it's, it's set up so that uh, we, we should be able to, to prove things pretty smoothly here. Uh, one, if x converges, then it's bounded. Uh, two, if x converges to L, then each of its subsequences converges to L. Three, if x converges to L, then A times Xn converges to L. If four, if Xn converges to zero and Yn is bounded, then X times y, Xn times Yn converges to zero. And then five, it has three parts. Uh, if X converges to L and Y converges to M, then x plus y converges to l plus m. Okay, the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits. Uh, if x, uh, I guess, and then xn times yn converges to l times m, the limit of the product converges to the product of the limits. And finally, if m is not z zero, then the sequence xn over yn converges to L over m. So the, the, the quotient uh, of the limit is the limit of the quotients, provided the denominator is not zero. Okay, we'll now knock these over like dominoes. All right, okay, so I'm gonna prove that if xn converges, then xn is bounded. Suppose that xn converges to L um, we'll show it's bounded. Uh, choose n so that if little n is bigger than capital N, then xn minus L, an absolute value, is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so let m be the maximum of 1 plus L, x minus L, an absolute value, uh, plus absolute value of L. Uh, xn plus uh, all the way up to xn minus l in absolute value plus the absolute value of l. Okay, so there are only a finite number of elements because it's fixed when we chose capital N. Okay, and so now note that x sub n is less than or equal to x sub n minus l in absolute value plus l. That's just the triangle inequality. So if n is any number bigger than or equal to capital N, x sub n is less than or equal to 1 plus the absolute value of l. Okay. And if n is less than uh, capital N, then x sub n is um, uh, less than or equal to x sub n minus 1 uh, for, for all of those values. So in either case, absolute value of x sub n is less than or equal to m. All right, now uh, we show that if x n converges to L, then each of its subsequences converge to L. So suppose x n converges to L, let x sub n sub k be a subsequence of x sub n. We claim that x sub n sub k converges to L. Let epsilon greater than zero be given. Uh, since x sub n converges to L, there is a k such that if k is greater than or equal to capital K, then x sub uh, k minus L is less than epsilon. Now, suppose that k is greater than or equal to capital K. Then n sub k is greater than or equal to K is greater than or equal to capital K. And so therefore, uh, uh, 
x sub n minus k, x sub n sub k minus l will be less than epsilon as well. And so x sub n sub k converges to l. All right, now, uh, if x converges to l, then uh, a times x sub n converges to a times l. Okay, so let epsilon greater than zero be given and choose n so that if n is greater than or equal to capital N, then x sub n minus l is less than epsilon over the absolute value of a plus one. Okay, so choose it to be big enough. So, and we may assume that a is not equal to zero because if it were equal to zero, everything's converging to zero. Okay, now suppose that n is greater than or equal to capital N, then the absolute value of a sub n minus a sub l is equal to the absolute value of a times x sub n minus l is less than, okay, epsilon over a plus one. Now, absolute value of a over absolute value of a plus one is less than one, so this product is less than epsilon, and so we're done. Uh, we've shown that a sub x, uh, a times x sub n converges to l. Okay, now we'll suppose that uh, it show that if x sub n converges to zero and y sub n is bounded, then x sub n times y sub n converges to zero. Uh, proof. Suppose, uh, suppose x sub n converges to zero and that y sub n is bounded. And, and suppose that, that y sub n is less than or equal to, to m for every n. So that this, we get this because it's bounded. Let epsilon greater than zero be given. Choose n, capital N, so that if little n is bigger than capital N, uh, x sub n, absolute value of x sub n time uh, is, and here we have a typo, is less than epsilon over m plus one. Okay, so less than goes right there. Anyway, now suppose n is greater than capital N then the absolute value of the product x n y n is equal to the absolute value of x n times the absolute value of y n. The fact that y n is bounded means that this is less than capital M times x sub n. Uh, the fact that x n converges to zero gives us that this is less than m times epsilon over m plus one and uh, this will be in fact less than epsilon and therefore uh, my product, the absolute value of the product xn, yn uh, converges to zero, so xn times yn converges to zero. Okay, we're now getting down to the, the tail end of it. Uh, the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits. Let epsilon greater than zero be given there is an n1 such that if little n is bigger than n1, it applies, implies that xn minus l in absolute value is less than epsilon 2. Similarly, there is an n2 such that n greater than n2 implies that uh, y, absolute value of yn minus m is less than epsilon over 2. Let n be the biggest one of n1 and n2. Now suppose n is bigger than n, uh, little n is bigger than n. Then of course n is bigger than n1 and it's bigger than n2. So if I take the absolute value of the difference between xn uh, x sub n plus x sub y sub n minus the sum uh, l minus m, this will be less than x minus x sub n minus l plus y sub n minus l. I will have had to do a little rearranging here and um, applying the triangle inequality. Each of the terms over here on the uh, right hand side is less than epsilon. 
and so uh, the sum is, is is less than epsilon, and so uh, x n plus y n minus l m plus one in absolute value is less than epsilon. Therefore, the limit of uh, x n plus y n is equal to l m plus uh, well equal to l plus m. Okay. Okay, the limit of the product is the product of the limits. Uh, consider xn uh, yn minus lm. Uh, notice here that again we 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 want to show that the difference between these could be made small. Okay, what I do here I I, I set them up and I add a well chosen zero in between them. Okay. That way I can factor out the xn and the m from, from the two resulting terms. Okay. Uh, this goes to zero and this is bounded. Uh, this goes to zero and this is bounded. Therefore, uh, the right hand side converges to zero. And so uh, by the squeeze lemma, uh, this difference goes to zero, therefore xn, yn converges to lm. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, what's left now is the limit of the quotient is the quotient of the limits. Here we have to be a little bit more careful. Uh, supposing that m is not equal to zero. Um, okay, so there is an n, so that if uh, little n is bigger than capital N, then y minus m is less than one half times m. And so I can do some rearranging in this case, and you can pause and follow through the math on this slide. Uh, but what, what I wind up doing is I, I, I wind up that showing that the reciprocal sequence uh, 1 over yn is bounded. Okay. And so, so this is bounded for large values of n. And so at this point it, it's just basically starting in, okay, let's show that xn over yn can be made small. Okay, I do, again, you can pause here and work your way through the algebra, uh, but I get that this is equal to 1 over m times 1 over yn times m times xn minus l times yn. Um, I, I then show that, that uh, the absolute value of m times xn times l times yn uh, can be made small. Okay, again, because by the squeeze principle, uh, it will go to zero because each of these terms goes to zero. And so, again, by the squeeze principle, because everything was set up nicely, I've got 1 over m, which is, you know, a constant number, 1 over yn, which is bounded, and I have mx time uh, minus mxn minus l yn converges to zero. Uh, therefore, the product converges to zero. Therefore, the this x over n minus y over n uh, times x over x, x sub n, y sub n minus l over m converges to zero. Uh, and therefore, my the quotient of my sequence converges to uh, the quotient of the limits.